let my spirit of truth shine on you, so that you in your turn reflect my image, reminding the world of my true face, since the world seems to have forgotten my true image in the shortest time. All of you will learn how to live a true life in God. They will be one, Father, as we are one. So that the world may believe that you have sent me. We must continue this prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ for the unity. Why are we gathered here? We are gathered here. It's not just, you know, having a good time, looking at the countries and some of them swimming. But the major uh, reason we are here, it's because he wants it. Jesus. Those who answered the call of Jesus met on 4th September 2009 in Greece, on 7th True Life in God Ecumenical International Pilgrimage to fulfill the invitation of the Lord to reconciliation and unity. There were more than 100 priests and bishops, and about 800 pilgrims from 54 countries and 16 denominations. with alphabetical order, Argentina, 19 people, Australia, Venezuela, 5. have found a common factor to uh, join in the love of the Lord to finally achieve the unity and uh, to show it in practice here. And I believe when this is spread throughout the world, then the unity will become reality. Thank you. This is the stated desire of our Lord for gathering around him all those who believe in him and that there would be no dissension amongst them but they all be one and one in him, one in God. l'archevêque Georges Haddad, archevêque de Césarée de Philippe, au sud du Liban. De l'église, de l'église grecque melkite catholique. I am our bishop Vincent Concesso, archbishop of Delhi, India. I am bishop Felix Topo from India, 
I belong to the Diocese of Jamshedpur, which is very close to Calcutta. Thank you. I am Bishop Avnawalat Insai Gavrgiorgis from Ethiopia. Double right. Native Ethiopian right and then serving in Latin right in eastern part at the border of Somalia. Thank you. Soy el arzobispo Kisak Muradian de la Iglesia Apostólica Armenia, primado de Argentina y Chile. Gracias. I am uh, Bishop Emeritus Raimundo Reboredo Ruiz de Operation of Julie in Puno, Perú. And I am very so happy to be here. I am Archbishop Gregorius Elias Tabe for the Syrian Catholic Church in Damascus, Syria. Thank you. I am Archbishop Aris Shirvanian from the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem. I am Archbishop Jeremiah of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in South America, Ecumenical Patriarchate. Thank you. Je suis l'archevêque émérite de Galilée. J'avais été évêque au Brésil, à côté de Monseigneur de Curitiba là. Et maintenant, je suis à la retraite. Mais comme j'ai dit au Saint-Père quand elle a visité la Terre Sainte, je lui ai dit, comme évêque de la Galilée, Jésus, Marie, Saint Joseph, Saint Pierre étaient tous mes paroissiens. Je suis leur évêque. Je suis Cardinal Teres Fortopo, Archbishop of Ranchi. Thank you. Good evening. I am Monsignor Isidor Batija. Metropolitan Archevêque of Homs, Hama, Ayabrut, in the center of Syria. Thank you. I am Riyah Abu El Hassel, a Nazarene, the former Anglican Bishop of Jerusalem and the Middle East. I am Well, good evening, everybody. I am the Archbishop of Galilee. My main concern is to build bridges between the different communities in Israel, between Christians, Muslims, Jews, and Druze. And we are making some breaking news, but we don't make much noise. Thank you for your prayers. My name is Joan Evangelista Martin Stefan, the Jesuit, Monsieur the Bishop of Emeritus, North Brazil. Also from the Parental House of Christianity, Archimandrite Hieronymus, representative of the Romanian Orthodox Patriarchate. René Laurentin. I will share now one message from the many messages that Jesus gave us about his church and unity. I am the guardian of my house and of my household. I am tormented to watch my house being riven. Have you read, and then Jesus is quoting the scriptures, owing to neglect the roof tree gives way. For want of care, the house lets in the rain. My house has been neglected. Every house is paid by someone. I have bought my house with my own blood. Why has no one listened to my supplication while I pray to the Father that you may be one? Today, had you responded to my call by showing obedience, you would be sharing one cup around one altar. If the churches are able to go beyond the negative obstacles that hinder them to unite, obstacles that according to scriptures are against the fulfillment of the unity of faith, love and worship among them, I will be faithful to my promise of releasing a time of peace in the entire world. This peace will draw every being into my mystical body, fulfilling my words given to you all 
in my prayer to God the Father, when I implored, may they be one in us as you are in me and I am in you, so that the world may believe it was you who sent me. This supplication uttered by my divine lips is echoing every second from heaven still. My words intonated were meant that the whole of the creation must be affected into a spiritual unity and not a unity by a signed treaty. To fulfill my words, the churches must seek first humility and love. Graces that can be obtained through the Holy Spirit and through a great repentance. Thank you. blessing upon these pilgrims. Bless their coming to this holy place where Lydia, among the first Europeans, was baptized in your holy name. We ask, O Lord, to renew us in the spirit of our baptism. Cleanse us, renew us, restore us, refresh us. Lift us up into glory. Amen. True life in God. This title is a challenge. This title is an invitation. Chers sœurs et frères, je suis très content d'être avec vous. Et dear brothers and sisters, I'm very happy to be with you. On m'a demandé de venir parce que vraiment je crois à l'unité de l'Église. Uh, I'm asked to come and I would like to come. I believe in the unity of the church. Because I believe in the unity of the church. <laughs> God bless you, it's a great pilgrimage. He saw seven golden candlesticks in the midst one like unto the Son of Man, Christ, dressed with a garment down to his ankles, his hair was as white as wool, as white as wool. Jesus, I love you. We're all having a lovely time, and this is our seventh ecumenical pilgrimage here. And uh, we've come back to Patmos as we did two years ago. And uh, we've come with more fervor and with more expectation of blessing and hope and to pray for unity that the Lord is asking us for.
we're going to talk about what Jesus wants from us. What does he want and how does he see the unity? All this book speaks about the way Christ wants unity. The true life in God, people, have heard the calling of the Spirit, the Spirit that calls his church to unite. We all know that division is a sin, and this is against God's law of love. Many people can keep having the dialogues, ecumenical dialogues, which are good, but what the Lord wants is to put them into action. It's to prove that you are sincere. We all know that the church has always been one, but the people of the church are those that, with their quarrels, prejudices, their pride, and, main, and mainly their lack of love for one another, manage to divide themselves, and we all know it. The Christians that remain divided do not live in the truth. No matter how credible and righteous they want to appear in the world's eyes, and no matter how many Hail Marys and devotions they will be doing, their lack of love and their lack of humility are a giveaway sign so obvious that we all notice it. I want to tell people also that really we are foretasting unity here. This is how it's going to be in unity, when it is unity. It's a, it's a unity of the heart. It's a spiritual unity. This is what the desire of Jesus is. And if we love Jesus with all our heart, we will know that we are doing his will. I share a building with three Christian communities, with the Catholics, the Anglicans and the Evangelicals. And um, I've done this for 20 years. And after about 10 years, I got tired of the Catholics ignoring me and the Evangelicals patronizing me. Uh, and I asked the Lord to take me away uh, because it seemed to me a, a terrible thing if I could no longer uh, offer a ministry of enthusiastic love because I had become tired and resentful. One of the things that True Life in God has done for me is to shine a light on that part of my heart where tiredness and resentment have taken control. Uh, and so it seems to me that in case you share my shortcomings, uh, one should do two things. The first is to rejoice in this miracle of unity and the shared light of Christ that we enjoy here. Uh, but the other thing, I'm, I'm reminded that there are still many Christians towards whom I am not um, I find it difficult to find the energy to show the love required. As Jesus said, it is easy to love those who love you. And so I'm reminded that um, one, of the, uh, one of the requirements that the Holy Spirit lays upon us <clears throat> is to go out to those Christians whom we do not find attractive, uh, or perhaps we don't find authentic, or that we don't find enough like us, uh, in order that uh, the love of Christ uh, can overcome the resentment that you too may feel or the tiredness that you have endured. Um, so, uh, amen. Yes, that would do fine. Thank you.
One of the significant prayerful expressions of true life in God has been our unified prayer for a unified Pascha, a unified Easter. Because you know, that is the greatest scandal, not only to our own people, not only to the people, but also to the non-Christians who look upon us as totally divided, for we crucify Christ two times a year. Let me begin by saying I pray for the day when we cease to refer to ourselves as Anglicans, Catholics, Baptists, Orthodox, Maronites, and start saying we are Christians. This requires that people of the faith in Christ become Christ-like, not only like-minded. been his father's will and if he was not inspired by the Holy Spirit so this has to happen first of all I would like to thank Vasula on behalf of Father Yosa Zovko for the invitation uh, she sent to him to join this pilgrimage almost one year ago I must tell you that I was quite surprised how simply Father Yosa and quickly said yes, I would like to join. My opinion is that it was the Holy Spirit who inspired him to accept this in invitation. He said Medjugorje messages and Vasula's messages are the graces that are given to the Church, to us today, to find the way to Christ our Lord. And he was sure that many people of open heart will be here gathered for prayer. My experience of this pilgrimage here, I, I really must, I must share with you because uh, it has surpassed all my expectations. I wish I could take just a little bit of this spirit of love, of unity, of brotherhood take with me to my country, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I decided to bring the message of Christ today and read it out instead of waiting the last day. This was received on the 27th August. I am not only the author of his great work, but today I am leading you to embellish my church. I want during these days to fill your mind, your heart and your entire being with all that I am, so that you progress in my divine love. As for all the afflictions you suffered under my name and all that you are undergoing for my sake, my Father will put aside all of your negligence and I will fill where you lacked. May you be blessed for your noble act of love. Remain united 
and become the perfect icon of unity. And there he smiled when he said the following. And, as you know, my power is at its best in weakness. Rejoice and be glad and add a smiling face to all that I have given you shine in this darkness and keep drawing the fire from my sacred heart. Be enamored of my cross so that your flame does not die out. Be the perfect image of my Father. My mercy is great and upon you all. Be one under my name. Shalom to all of you. In the Lord who is asking us uh, through Fasula to live uh, a life of love in unity, a life in the spirit of unity. Um, I am very grateful uh, for the blessed messages and enriching uh, reflections from uh, the church leaders here present yesterday. All is about unity and dialogue and that we as Christians uh, be united and that we uh, proclaim uh, together uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In this way we can proceed to change the word diabolos in dialogue. Thank you. Nous savons que le Seigneur nous demande l'unification des dates de Pâques. We know that us, uh, the Lord asks us to unite the dates of Easter. Because he said Unless the dates of Easter is, are unified, unity will not come. So it is first the un unification of the dates of Easter, and then he promised that the Holy Spirit will give so much light into the church that uni unity will come immediately. Je, attends, deux secondes. Je dois simplement dire qu'il existe déjà une pétition sur Internet. Je ne sais pas exactement combien de signatures il existe déjà, de la part des internautes. If the bishops could sign also the petition, si les we could signer. then send all the signatures to the Vatican, to the patriarchs and so on. Yeah! There is a vast number of churches which need to be partners here and there and everywhere to the glory of God so we can be one in the Spirit and one in the Lord. Thank you, Mr. This is why we have a difference in the dates of Easter. But I think uh, we should look more deeper into the causes of the division. Uh, division. May they be well as we walk together on the way to full communion. And the like, so that this message will reach out not from only the bishops. We represent so many denominations here, but it goes under the title to life in God. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, I think it was him, said, where the bishop is, there is the church. Um, we've been especially blessed in having the bishops here, and I've been thinking about that for some time during this pilgrimage, how very important the bishops are. And I just want to remind you of that, that story about the Ethiopian eunuch who went to Israel to be cured, and he was looking for something dramatic. And the prophet Elisha said, go and wash in the river. He wouldn't do it because he thought it was too simple. God is asking us to do, here this evening to do something very simple. He's asking the bishops here to do something very simple, to sign as bishops. Because where the bishop is, there is the church. <laughs> Thank you.
You know, in 25 years ago, when the Lord approached me, and he was saying that my message will go around the world, and every nation will hear about my message. I could never imagine. I was there, nobody know. knew anything yet, calling me every day to take dictations. I left my tennis, <laughs> my paintings, my friends, and at times I was saying, what am I doing here? The sun is shining outside and I'm closed here and taking to. dictation. And anyway, I said, I was sometimes rebelling. I said, these messages will go nowhere. Yes, the Lord said, they will go everywhere. I said, they will finish in a drawer and they will stay there. No, he said, every nation will know about it. Then I was sometimes afraid. I said, you know what they'll do to me Did when I will speak about messages? They'll cut them into small pieces like confetti and throw them on my face. You this was, you know, a person who never had a catechism. And I thought the church was one and only the nationalities changed. So totally ignorant. But that's what he wanted. As he said, I wanted nothing. I want a canvas which is blank, so that I can put all what I put on the canvas will be my own. You know, one more thing. I had ups and downs. It was very difficult. It's it still difficult. But one day, I just couldn't continue. Because the Lord was saying, go and give my messages. However, he never opened the door. So it was like heavy. And he was saying, don't go out until I tell you, <laughs> but you will go out. So I told him one day, you know, your word is wonderful, but it is heavy, very heavy. And one day I thought I would just, I said to the Lord, can't you just lead, you, you get, no, you have reached your aim, your goal. You have reached your goal. To get to know you, to get to love you, and go back to the sacraments of the church. Now you can leave me. And you can leave me to live like everybody. That evening I dreamt. I dreamt of Padre Pio. He was shouting to me in Italian. But he was speaking to me in Italian. I didn't understand anything. But I know he was telling me off. And he was making gestures, you know, Italian style. <laughs> And in front of him was passing back and forth up to here, St. Francis. And he was saying nothing, just passing by. Donc Saint back and forth. Rien, seulement passé devant lui. And then Padre Pio showed me a ladder. I looked at the ladder, which went all the way up to heaven. And up there, I saw the silhouettes of saints. I couldn't see who they were. Je ne they were far up. And they were making gestures. Il me fait comme, il me fait comme ça. Hein? On m'a dit de monter. You have to climb up. And I looked, and I didn't yet put my first foot on that ladder. So how could I leave this mission that the Lord gave? I eh? didn't put one step yet. <laughs> and then the Lord appeared and showed his heart, full of thorns, bleeding. And he said, "Are you going to abandon me? How could you?" I then I said, "No, Lord." Coming back. Thank you.